having a little little wait for a few minutes, wait for some people to drop on. So I can at least see that I've got people watching. I've got someone on Facebook, that's always good. And I've got a notification from Facebook, so that's okay. I think, I think we're good. Patricia, hello, I have someone on both. Excellent. Hello folks, Nikki from Gracie's house here. I'm um, the UK based brand ambassador for Paint Couture. And um, I'm, this is my time slot, so this is the time if you fancy seeing new things, new recipes, techniques and products, this is the place to come. I am going to be working on one of my recipes this week. So those of you that follow Facebook, um, Barb, hello my lovely. Um, follow me on Facebook, um, both on Patricia, you're there too, great. Anyone on Instagram, if you want to just drop a hello, tell me where you're watching from, and obviously Facebook as well. Um, so yeah, I drop down a new recipe um, on a weekly basis, on a Friday, usually. Um, and this one I did show, hello Laurie, hi Linda. Um, you have seen this one before, you've seen the recipe, but you've not seen it in work. And um, I thought I'd give it a go on a big piece. So I've got this piece prepped up. It is a Liebus um, chest of drawers. Hello, all my lovelies. This is um, quite a famous um, furniture brand, mid-century in the UK. And um, decent quality, but it was done to kind of bring those mid-century lines to the masses post-war when products... Sandra, hello from Sweden. Thank you for saying hello. When, um, you know, everything was everything was um, scarcer and more expensive. So they did it in a more cost-effective way. Um, but they're really, really, really popular. Really popular to be painted. Um, this one is a six draw set. But I've found that historically, every t everyone I've worked on, once it's clean, it, it just kind of, it's the gift that keeps on giving and it just keeps on bleeding. So they are oak, uh, bits of veneer. The drawers are pretty solid, but I just find the best thing to do is to um, prime them. So this has had two coats of the Shore Prep stain blocking primer in the gray. So that's what we've got going on here. Um, I've done my normal and I've taped off my drawers. I don't know if you can, shall I turn that light down a little? Let's turn it down just a touch. So you can see where I've taped off um, my lovely do dovetail joints. So I tape it off and I cut round and then when I reveal, it shows off the lovely dovetail joints details. So we have primed two coats everywhere. Really, 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 really nice, smooth. Um, hi Phyllis from Louisiana. Um, yeah, it's a really, really good primer. It gives a lovely smooth finish. I've rolled pretty much the whole piece. So when I roll on, I just use these uh, microfiber rollers. Uh, it's a redesign with Prima roller frame because I have loads of these. Um, these particular brand is called Two Fussy Blokes, which I believe is from Australia, but we have it here in the UK. I don't think you've got it in the States, you guys, sorry. But if you can get yourself any um, decent microfiber roller, they work really, really well with paint couture. Um, a self-leveling, as long as you don't overload, underload it, don't overwork it, it's got a really, really nice finish. I'm going to be using a roller most of the day today. So, we're going with creme caramel on this piece. I tend to do them a bit bolder, these, these Liebus sets. So I've done one in a dark green, I did one in the mustard recipe, but I just felt like I quite fancy seeing in one of these in a kind of warm neutral. And the creme caramel recipe that I came up with is really perfect for that. Hello Erin, how are you? So it is 50% uh, modern rattan and 50% French putty. So I try to make most of my recipes as easy as possible, these 50-50 mixes. Normally I use a spoon. I've got some measuring spoons, but I don't know where they've gone. So I've just got some scales here for the time being. So I, the easy way to do this is pop your container on that you're going to be mixing in. So then switch your scales on because then it will zero out without taking into consideration the weight of the scales, uh, the weight of your container. Beg your pardon. Um, I think we're good there. Okay. So I was 
I was running low on both of these and I was desperately waiting for Helen to send me and they, some, some replacement ones and they've come in the post so if we don't quite have enough I have backups. So I'm just going to pour these in. I'm going to do it off camera because it's a tad boring for me. But um, let me see that one's got more in. So I'm going to dump out everything I've got left in my French putty colour into the container and then I can equal it then I can add in equal amounts so let me get um, I've got a stir stick here just so I can get out as much as possible from my pot and not waste any so I think there was quite a lot of love for this recipe it's a really very warm neutral once we get going you'll see because I love both of these colours um, and I'm all kind of feeling, you know, for those cosy, cosy autumn winter tones right now. But this is like a neutral, a neutral cosy, like a warm blanket. Um, let's just see if I can get one more gram and then we've got 90 grams. But as long as you're equal amounts, it's, there we go, I tipped it over to 90, perfect. So I'm going to put in the equal amount of modern rattan so i'm just giving it a knock on the thing there if you if you paint sat for a while and i know we all say that what you should do is put it into a separate container and put the lid back on and clean it all off us painters i've seen cc she doesn't do it either it is it is the best way to do things it's just one. debbie hello melanie i've just seen you pop up hello hello um so if you don't do good practices and you just pop your container lid back on just give it a knock and it usually will crack the seal if anything's happened there okay so i'm going to just mix in my modern rattan to get me an equal mix getting there there we go I should have used my stir stick and I didn't. So I've got a little bit of that left over in that pot. Let's get that off my brush. I'm gonna have to get another brush now. Try not to use my brushes to scrape the pots out because, so look at those two colors together. <sighs> Lovely. Because then you've got, like you've, I've got loads of now the top color before I mix it. So I'm gonna just give it a good mix. So it's quite a nice, the modern rattan is quite tan. But just dropping in the um, the French putty lightens it up nicely. Not that there's any problem with that tan, but I wouldn't want to. I, I think it'd be lovely as a wash. Derek's used it as. Um, did he use it as a wash or did he use it as a solid colour? Anyway, Derek's used modern rattan on some really really nice pieces. If you haven't seen for um, the grandson's brush. <coughs> So just give it a nice big stir, try and scrape around the edges. This is quite handy because it's quite a flat surface. So my, my stir stick really kind of scrapes around the edges quite well. sticking out of it there not sure what that is and I've just realized some of you might have got some of you might have thought I was going to be either or was it later or earlier earlier our clocks changed in the UK I'm thinking it pulls through correctly on the calendar but I'm not sure but thanks for joining me okay we're all mixed up I think we're good to go and the other reason I've used these nice, open, wide, shallow trays is um, because it's easy to get my roller into. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to turn the camera down, Instagram, you can see. I'm going to start here. And we're going to do these draw fronts first. So I'm going to pull this over a little. Just a tad. Got some room. 
you see what I'm doing? Yes, okay. So I load my roller up and it really is as simple as just getting your paint on there. Um, I think this is gonna have really good coverage because of the colors that I'm using. Paint Control has got good, co good coverage. There's obviously in, in all paint ranges, you know, the lighter the color, the, the coverage can be a bit more tricky. Um, I've got a couple of bits where, and that's the other reason you should pour your paint into a separate container when you paint so that none of the dry stuff drips into the, just got a comment there, let me see. Your clocks change. Yes, Laurie, that's right. There's always a week, either end of the year, where our clocks go a, a week before you guys. And um, yes, so yeah, we'll be back. We'll be back in line next week. Happy days. You see how good the coverage is? And that's just one, obviously it's just one coat over the primer, but really, really good. Really nice. Um, so I just go along the edges with the same, using my roller, because it's nice and flat. Go on that kind of edge that's that's curved there. And the self-leveling, like I say, is the coverage is great. The self-leveling is awesome. And I've said this several times, but to the point where if you're trying to create texture, it this paint needs an additive. Um, because it's the self-leveling is so good, if you're just trying to create texture with your brush or whatever you're using, it will self-level on you. <laughs> I've seen it happen and it really does do it. So you can see a little bit of texture. By the time that's dry, that will flatten out. That's just from my roller. So I'm just gonna pop that onto one side. We'll carry on. And I'm loving the colour. It is like a really nice, well, it's exactly like a creme caramel. It's kind of the colour that, that's why I picked the name. Because it's so good. Oh, I keep missing comments, sorry. Deborah, lovely colours. Am I using a transfer? I will be. I tend, on these, these styles of pieces, I... I think they just speak for themselves. So I often use the transfers on the draw sides for these. And in the UK market, it works well. People seem to like these as a one color finish. Um, I haven't 100%, I've got some options. And I think with this color, it gives me some options as well. Um, but yes, I will be, but probably for the draw sides. But I will probably be doing that next week now. So, and you can see, um, hello, just like home. Is that is that Helen? No, it probably isn't, is it? I'm not sure. Helen would probably come on as Helen. I'm not sure. You'll have to let me know. So it, it will give it a really, um, this colour is going to sit back as a really quite nice boho kind of um, mid-century colour. So you can put this with, you know, lovely eucalyptus-y greenery um, and bamboo and it will sit back lovely. I'll show you the hardware in a minute. I've shown you the hardware all before because um, you've seen me use these handles on other pieces and they're my absolute favourite. So you all know that I, where I can, I will use the original hardware and I love, they just got it right, didn't they? They just got it so, so right, which is hardware. I mean, I know we can get good stuff now, but there's nothing quite, they just got it right. Okay, let's just turn that around. Really liking this color actually on a piece. I mean, I liked it when I made it and it was on my, you know, it's in my little book of colours. 
I'm really digging it. So I'm just going to keep going with these. And, you know, I can show you, bearing in mind, if I wasn't talking, I would be ripping through these much quicker. I'm really keen to show you how you can work quickly and get things done really, really quickly. Um, I do find on these bigger pieces where you've got nice big runs, I do like to use a roller. There's nothing fiddly, there's no nooks and crannies. Really on these, the only time I need to use a brush is to get into these details, to get up under that lip there. And then similarly, there's little lips on the sides. And that's it. Apart from that, a brush really doesn't touch these pieces particularly. On the insides it's easier but this is these are more about a roller finish for me. Um, my next my next plan is to get to get using uh, my spray gun which I've had for ages and never actually busted it out of its box um, because word on the street is paint chalk sprays up beautifully big surprise there not um, so I really want to get my spray gun out but again it's great for single color finishes more so than you know you wouldn't well I'm certainly not skilled enough to be thinking about blending with a spray that's for sure so there we go, you know, I'm chatting away. We've got three drawers down already. And it's really just letting you see how quickly you can get this paint on. You don't have to fiddle with it too much. And keep going. What do you think of the colour that you can see? What do you think so far? So this, this is the grey primer and this is the colour we're putting on. I'm really liking it. And you know, someone, because um, I put this out to everybody to choose sort of what colour. And I, thought, I can't remember if this was one of the suggestions or, or um, more like one of the new autumn sort of colours was put out. So, and I'd already used cardigan. Has anyone seen cardigan? That one's a nice colour as well. That one's a nice neutral. Patricia, you think you're loving the colour? It's a cute one, isn't it? And do you know what, there's, there's some really nice, there's a couple of transfers that I've got in mind that will go with this really nicely. Just pop them around there. Yeah. So we've got two drawers left to do. Let's get them out of the way over there. And, you know, I, I, if, I'll see how this dries up, but I mean, I will probably give it a, a second coat because I like to, to know I've got, you know, not only for the coverage, but just for the, the thickness of paint I like to send out on my pieces. Um, but, but actually the coverage is superb on this colour. And with the primer, it just saves any, if you've got any doubts that your piece is gonna bleed, just, it's not worth chancing it. Just prime it. Lisa, you've just joined. Apologize if this is mentioned already. What use, roll am I using? It is, um, it's a microfiber roller. And the brand I use is called Two Fussy Blokes, which I don't think you can get in the States if you are. I've missed, I can't see where, I'm not sure where you're based, but yeah, if you can find um, a retailer probably can recommend you a good brand in the US of microfiber rollers and the frame is the redesign of Prima one. Oh, frame is a frame really, isn't it? I guess. 
So it's a bit colder here at the moment, so things are taking a little bit longer to dry um, than they were a few weeks ago. We'll just keep carrying on. Keep calm and carry on. Do you know what? This colour looks, it's next to my cup of tea, it actually looks the colour of my tea. <laughs> You're in the US. I thought you might be. So yeah, um, or if anyone watching in the US, if we've got any retailers or anybody that uses microfiber rollers and can recommend, that would be awesome. Foam ones, um, you tend to get just a little bit more dimpling because they can have, can they can get air in them. Although the redesign with Prima foam ro rollers, rollers are really good. Um, I find the microfiber better. I use the foam ones if I'm stenciling because you can have, I feel you have a bit more control when you're stenciling with the foam ones. So I'm just doing those edges. It's all going on really nicely. We go underneath as well. I like to try and finish off everything as tidy as possible. When I'm doing blended finishes, I quite often get the question, uh, why am I painting with the drawers in? And when you're doing a blended finish, you need to make sure that the blend matches up. And that would be almost impossible if you did that with your drawers out. But for these one color finishes, definitely the way to go. And I always say for a one color finish, and here's the very proof of that paint with them out and then you get all the edges and especially if I'm going to the effort of doing these dovetail joints taping them off um, you need to you need to paint out okay let's move you over there oh hang on. I've just got to leave it there it's just okay right so I'm going to make some space just a little bit let's move you I'm going to let's start on a side so you can see the whole piece. You see all that? You can see that. Let's move you up a little bit on fresh book. There we go. So we're just going to keep going. And I might get my brush involved. I might have to get another brush because that's probably got all one colour on it. But firstly, I just want to get my paint on and then I can work it to flatten it out. Get rid of those little bits that that one's there, that one's stuck. So this is where I tend to get my brush involved, just to go down here. I'll just grab one. <coughs> down here. Hold on a sec, folks. That one's probably good. That one's good. So just a, a wee bit to come down into this channel. So it's like, imagine you're doing decorating. This is like the cutting in around the edges. This is exactly what we're doing here. And up under that lip, that is basically all we're doing. We're cutting in. And of course you will get slightly different texture from brushing to rollering. So I do then go over as much as I can with the roller because I want any slight texture that I see, I want that to be uniform across my piece. So although it does self-level, it will still self-level slightly differently when you brush to when you roll. I don't know if that makes sense at all. But if you have painted before, you'll kind of know what I'm, where I'm going with, with what I'm saying there. And just make sure that I've got no kind of excess hanging around there. And when I'm actually rolling to a finish, 
are rolling in the same direction and that's that's generally the, the, the direction of the wood grain when I'm kind of getting my paint just on I'll, I'm a bit a bit more haphazard and I kind of do it all over the place but for the actual finishing part I want my roller all to be going in the same direction a bit yellowy in your screen it's actually really not it's got definitely a more tan kind of level and hue to it um, okay. and I'm just going to pick that bottom let's get my brush out of the way there we go that's better there the bottom bit I think Facebook sorry you probably can't see that piece now let's just make that finished off and our legs are finished off to match as well around the back oh need to get that leg keep sliding off. That's it. There we go. Let's just stand up. You see I've missed a tiny bit there so I'm just going to run that. That was because I was at the wrong angle to see. There we go. And I'm going to just run along there because again that's that the kind of curve that's on that is tricky with the roller to catch it all. I'm just going to turn my heater off because it's actually getting warm in here. It's a really rich, yes, it's kind of, um, yeah, it probably is a very rich cream. Very <laughs> double heavy cream. <laughs> there we go. So like I said, over here, to get in all those details, I'll need to, I'm going to have to put you on a bit, there we go. Whoop. Um it needs a brush because you need to sort of pounce into those carvings and get all up under there for that lip and then once you've got into all of those you can um, go over with the roller if you want to and then that kind of finishes you to give you the same finish And we can just carry on kind of with the framing out at the front. Look at these handles. I'm going to show you because I haven't shown you these yet. It does give a really, really good finish. Look at these. You see. Aren't they awesome? So that's like the traditional Liebus handle. They, they remind me of scarab beetles. What do you think? That's, that's what I kind of, in my head, I always think of scarab beetles. Um, but they just, they clean up well, and they spray up really, really well. Love to, love to refresh them. Love. Patricia, aren't they pretty? Yeah. 
splattered. I think I splattered a bit there. Hold on. I think I managed to splatter only my hand. That's not too bad. Instagrammers, you can kind of see the whole piece, can't you? Because your vertical, whereas you Facebook folks, I'm having to move you down and up and down. <laughs> up and down. So let's just keep going. I'm really, really pleased that the, the coverage is so good over, you know, you, it really makes a difference. You can really see where it's over the, um, the gray, the primer gray. definitely got a very warm tone to it this one so those of you that have joined not from the beginning if you've joined a little bit later this is called this is a custom color mix called creme caramel so I um, create new recipes with existing main range colors and um, this is half and half of French putty and modern rattan to give us creme caramel. <coughs> and wherever I'm using the brush, if I then just have to just tinker over a little bit with the roller, I don't mind too much. I'm just, I'm just going on all around the frame here as well. Just so that because the, the drawers they slip, sit slightly proud, but I like it when you you don't have you don't see any wood colour or obviously pri primer colour. Now I've primed it. I like it all to be nice and kind of finished off inside. So we're going around the, the insides of the frame too. But along this piece here, let's just get around that. And again, it just means if the if the drawers. As, you know, sometimes this is actually a really, really good condition one, but sometimes if your drawers sit a little funny, it's nice to have everything in the frame and everything um, painted to match. Okay. So I'm just going to go down here and do that leg. And it's like, it's practically impossible to get that down there with the roller and get it flat and get it into the, there's like a little carved groove there. It is practically impossible. So we do get that, get in there with the brush on this one. Okay, and then I'm just going to go under there. So let's finish off underneath as well. Let's just go around this side. So again, just down here, just going on those insides, making things nice and finished off. Okay. Let me see, my drawers are still, well, some of them are drying. If I've missed any comments, I'll catch up with them. I was concentrating. <laughs> I will catch up afterwards. Let's turn it round, do that final. And then we'll see, we might have to draw, maybe ha you get the hair dryer out and just dry the dress, the drawers off. Okay, so like I said, I'm just going to use that cutting in sort of technique just to get into that 
um, recess, I will call it a recess, inset panel, the frame, whatever you want to call that bit. So, you know, this is this is going to be a really effective one colour finish and a lot of the mid-century type furniture suit, a, oh, if you're going to paint it, will suit a one colour finish better, in my opinion. Um, and although I'm aware that a lot of true, true mid-century fans wouldn't paint mid-century furniture they'll highlight you know nice wood these these are so dark there's no kind of pretty walnut or teak or anything like that on these so the nice kind of oak veneer but that's it there's nothing particularly pretty about the actual wood that's used so I don't have too much of an issue Oops. Um, painting these bad boys up and it's particularly here in the UK that is definitely the fashion for these pieces is to you know a nice one colour finish so I'm not putting pressure on my roller either you don't need to, if you've got it loaded to kind of the right amount, you don't want too much, you don't want it flicking all over the place. But um, I'm not putting any pressure on, I'm just kind of guiding it. One, one coat that is pretty impressive I think you'll agree with that kind of tone of color it can be um, on some brands it can be a little bit shaky I would say but that is pretty impressive I've got a little bit there and that's because I've brushed it through that's better um, as I said, I will do another one, and, and the second coat is really in case I've missed spots rather than the actual coverage. Let's see how our drawers are getting on. Just got a little bit there that was over. It's gone round the corner. Let's just flatten that down. The bottom has three bigger drawers. Let's see which ones we've got here. It might be that one. So I'm not going to put them all the way in. I'm just going to going to kind of get you to, to see how it's going to look. Let's move Facebook is up a little bit. Oh, there we go. Now, 
some of these are a little bit tight, so I'm going to have to shave down the draw sides a touch. Um, oh, that doesn't go there either. Have I got these in the wrong order? Folks, I've got them in the wrong order. Clearly. That one must go there. When I took them out, I had them in the right order, and then I had to move them around so that you could all see what I was doing. There we go, that one fits there. It must have been an even bigger one on the bottom. Yeah. So how's that starting to look? That's going to look so, so cute. And then with our lovely hardware on it, really doesn't want to stick to go. This one, I think this one is the top one. So what are we thinking? Lulu, fabulous, thank you. I think this color actually is really, really nice. See, it will slide in now. I'm tr I swear I tried it in there just now and it didn't want to go. So yeah, we've got, we've got quite a lot of dryness. Uh, these ones, the first ones, they're just starting to dry. These are still quite damp. Like I said, it's a lot colder. So even though I've got the heater on, I was getting hot. Overall, it's a lot colder, so it's not drying quite so quickly. Um, haven't done the top. Let's get the top. Let's do the top and see where we are with with the dryness. Let me see. Let me see. A little extra dribble going on there. There we go. Let's just grab that. So I do this bit first, and then roll up, so that I haven't got to worry about the getting into that and then messing with my finish that's on the top. Let's get that off the floor. Load the roller up a little bit. Like I say, I just, um, I just want to get the paint on sort of relatively quickly so I can then sort out my finish. So if you see me dip in with my finger every now and then, that's because I've been a naughty girl and I've not, I've, I've not poured my uh, paint into a separate container every time I use it, which means you get bits of bits of stuff fall back into your paint pot, and that's what every now and then I dip in with my finger, and that's because I'm naughty and I don't put my lid on and things get in my paint pot. <laughs> Patricia, you're looking for a dresser like this. Ah, it is rather lovely. I've got another one that's similar, just slightly bit smaller, and I've got some plans for that as well, which I'm very excited about. My husband was supposed to be coming home at lunchtime and cleaning it for me. Ah, oh, I've just put a massive big thing on mine on my wall. I need to... <laughs> um, yes, he was supposed to be coming home and cleaning it for me and the daughter's got a self-tape that he's got to prep for instead, so... <laughs> what a mess. That was a bit of an accident, doesn't, wasn't it? Patricia, where are you? You're, you're not... Um, you're not my side of the pond either, are you? I don't think. I, I, I lose track, to be honest. Okay, so I'm gonna get, I have missed a draw edge out. Over here, I've missed an end. <laughs> you didn't tell me, I missed it. Okay, I 
I'm going to get my hair dryer out and just see if we can run that over. Um, because I can see on, can, can you see where it looks like it's drying in patches? And that, or it looks like it's got some weird, yes, yeah, Patricia, very much not in my area at all. <laughs> um, and it's not, that's just how it's drying. There's no, there's no staining coming through. It's literally just drying randomly. So that's just... And I've got a really, this is a really old hair dryer. If you're going to do heat, keep it moving and don't have it too hot. Because it's, it's when it's drying that those self-leveling properties are working to the max. So what you don't want to do is blast it with really, really hot air and not let the self-leveling have time to actually take effect. And also, if you use like an air gun rather than a, hot, than a hair dryer, you need to make sure that you're really far away because you don't want to start that paint, you know, like a strip, little strip paint if it's too hot. But yeah, this is an old one, so it, doesn't, it just doesn't get that hot. even out as it starts to dry. Oh, it feels so buttery smooth. Hopefully my tea is not going to See, it's really similar colour to my tea. I will be doing a second coat. There's no point in me doing another coat with you guys. You can see how it looks. But just look how lovely. I'm going to pop perhaps a little bit of um, gold wax on just to lift the handles a little bit. So I've just sprayed them with oil rubbed bronze as it is, just to highlight a little bit. I'm going to pop them in and then we'll pop some transfers on the sides of the drawers for a little peekaboo action. And, um, but no, I'm loving the colour. So, recap, folks. It was an oak piece. We primed with, where's it gone? Two coats of the grey stain blocking primer, the Shaw Prep stain blocking primer. And then I've used one of my recipes, which is creme caramel, which is this lovely colour here. Yum, yum, yum. Which is half and half French putty and modern rattan. So it gives you this really, really nice, warm, creme caramel looks a bit like my tea, my milky tea, but it's got a really classy um, feel to it, this colour. Very buttery, smooth, lovely. Um, if there's any questions that I have missed while I have my back to the camera, I will catch up with them later. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this recipe. Yeah, Lulu, the handles are like literally my favourite handles ever. Um, so yeah, if there's any questions I missed, I will catch up. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing this recipe in action. 
and maybe we'll use it on something and you can share it. Just, um, if you haven't already, pop onto Facebook and join the Paint Couture Showcase group, which is where everybody's showing their stuff. Lisa and Charlie, beautiful, lovely, gorgeous colour, perfect. Okay, thank you guys. It is starting to dry everywhere else, so I might even get the second coat on shortly. Um, thank you for joining me. There is links in the description, not on Instagram, unfortunately, but on Facebook, if you're watching on Facebook, there's a link to Gracie's house. There's a tag there. So pop over there and drop me some love. There's also a link to find retailers, both in the US and the UK. On Instagram, um, we are already on the page for Paint Couture, which is awesome. If you haven't already, drop over to Gracie's house, which is Gracie's underscore house UK, and show me some love over there. Thanks guys, see you soon, see you again next week, bye bye.